everybody. Uh, welcome to the 12th Global University Bioethics uh, Roundtable. Uh, now, uh, uh, this is the last Roundtable. And uh, we want you to enjoy uh, this Roundtable. And now it's time uh, uh, to start uh, the Roundtable. The first, uh, the Professor Inokrat, uh, Vice President of the Graduate School of the Social and Cultural Sciences, and I will give us a greeting. Please. Thank you for thank you very much for the introduction. I am Krahe uh, Ogino, a vice dean of the Graduate School of Social and Cultural Sciences, Kumamoto University. Uh, I would like to extend my warm greetings to everyone attending the trials <coughs> Kumamoto University Bioethics Roundtable co-hosted by the American University of Southern Nations and Kumamoto University. For the last 11 years, a variety of issues have been discussed in our Bioethics Roundtable here at Kumamoto University. Titled Bioethics in the 21st Century, this year we have a two-day seminar to examine various topics related to bioethics. The rise of many global challenges has required us to promote interdisciplinary research and education to address those problems that are complex and multidimensional. Kumamoto University is a general university formed from natural sciences and social sciences and humanities. Although it is not so uncommon that researchers hold double degrees in natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities in foreign countries. Unfortunately, it is conventional practice that many Japanese scholars confine themselves to a discipline without looking beyond the purview of their fields. However, Kumamoto University has courageously initiated interdisciplinary researches and education with significant achievements. And the joint organization of this bioethics roundtable is one of them, since the field of bioethics needs interdisciplinary cooperation. Two years and seven months have passed since the big earthquakes hit Kumamoto. We are still in the middle of recovery from the damages. The earthquakes and the recovery of them have shown the increasing importance to promote interdisciplinary approaches. I strongly hope through the lively discussions covering a variety of themes, this bioethics roundtable will bear fruit in presenting cutting-edge knowledge and insights to promote the virtue of bioethics so that the dignity and the preciousness of life will be respected and enacted around the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vice Dean. Uh, not Vice President, <laughs> Vice Dean. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Good morning and thank you, uh, Professor Okamaya. And uh, it's wonderful that uh, we're here again, thanks to Professor Takahashi's efforts to have another Biofix Roundtable. Uh, it is uh, autumn in Kumamoto. Uh, I think the Momoji, the autumn. Uh, the leaves of a maple tree are wonderful. And this room is an interesting venue for us. For 12 years, we've had the round table in this room. 
it's connected as part of nature in the same sense that bioethics is part of nature. And uh, we have uh, some stones there. Maybe some of the breath of the dragon of Mount Asu can reach to us. And the essence of bioethics is part of our discussion. Uh, American University of Sovereign Nations uh, is honored to be uh, a partner with Kumamoto University uh, in this round table. And we have uh, scholars who have joined this project for many years. Uh, and we have also some scholars who joined for uh, several times. We have some students which we're most gracious to have. Uh, we would like everyone to sit around the round table that's actually a rectangle, but it's the idea of the round table is everyone is equal and through our participation we can share ideas. The universities are founded on the basis of ideas and bioethics is an idea which I may argue is the love of life how do we promote our relationships to each other and nature? How do we work for self-determination? In the last 12 years, we've had many themes. Self-determination was one of the first themes. It's actually an English expression which I first learned from Professor Takahashi because the focus of much discourse had been on the word autonomy or choice and consent, but actually self-determination has become, I think, more widely used uh, than it used to be. We also have seen this uh, theme of cross-cultural communication. Uh, all of us have developed our capacity for self-reflection and reflection together in the discourse of interactive ethics. Bioethics, by its nature, is intrinsically multidisciplinary and cross-disciplinary. Uh, even in the term, bringing natural science and social science together, bringing life and love together, bringing uh, theories of prescription, such as morals and etiquette, into discourse and philosophical reflections. We have also, uh, this year, we're celebrating the collection of papers uh, that is leading, is people have contributed to a book. We have that book uh, in an electronic version. There's a final check before we print. And if some of you have a paper ready to include, uh, please do include that, because the paper is a way that we can exchange uh, ideas between people. And it's also a legacy that will continue to be used by scholars in the future. The universities are sometimes a paper chase. Uh, many of us are chasing papers and reading papers and books. And that's how we represent our ideas. But also ideas are represented in other forms as well religious beliefs, etiquette, social customs, and these are also ways that we can uh, reflect on the way that we think. So I would like to congratulate Professor Takahashi for 12 years of roundtables, and it's been a fitting legacy for the development of international bioethics. We've had over a um, a hundred scholars from different countries join the round tables. Uh, sometimes this room has been full with about 100 people, probably too many for the safety standards, and sometimes uh, we have had different views that are not expressed in different spaces. So the creation of a space and a place is very precious in our world today, 
for dialogue. It's something which we value, and I appreciate the university. I hope that forms of dialogue about people's identity, the construction of uh, how we are and who we are as human being and humankind will be done uh, and continue to be done here. Thank you very much for joining us today. <clears throat>
truth has under seven. I wish to all the participants a happy and meaningless day in this view. I'm recovering speed tomorrow. I am very much thank you. Thank you, okay. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. So it's always happy to uh, back in Komoto, yeah, particularly nice weather, so I can walk uh, 35 minutes from downtown to here. Yeah. And so I catch, uh, I catch the time, also catch, got cold, okay? So this is a little bit problematic. Uh, one of the interesting things is uh, when I uh, prepare my uh, presentation, uh, it doesn't seem to be need to be changed, but it's after I read the program, of this uh, conference, and also I noticed uh, there will be a uh, will be the, uh, critical discussion. I think I, I better have to rethink what I'm going to say. And luckily or unluckily, what happened this week? Uh, there's some uh, scientific discovery or scientific accident happens, where, whereby you got a uh, incredible and perhaps uh, tragic. Uh, beginning of the uh, uh, gene design babies, uh, twins, uh, which happened uh, also unluckily, and, and the presentation was at the University of Hong Kong, which I, I taught and I, educate, I was educated. So I know a little bit about who is who. And interestingly, I think that this gives a very interesting uh, phenomenal uh, backdrop or development, which can a little bit uh, mirror image my presentation, namely when my um, Presentation highlight the disaster from the uh, from, from the uh, nuclear power plant, uh, which I frame it in the in terms of uh, uh, apocalyptic learnings from the disaster. At the same time, when we talk about disaster, it seems to be something bad. But at the same time, we have got the same uh, attachment in the super modern um, development of technologies. Sometimes disasters happen. On one hand, it's natural disaster. But on the same time, you've got the disaster basically is uh, man-made or, he or he made because of the human civilization, which, which I focus, when I prepare the paper uh, presentation, I'm thinking about the climate change, I'm thinking what happened in the last uh, six months happening uh, in all kinds of um, flooding, drought, and ar ar around different parts of the world, particularly in Japan, you've got typhoon, you've got flooding, you've got all the things you happen. It, it doesn't belong to the normal types of uh, 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 climate change. So in a way, uh, I add on a little bit about my observation about the climate change, namely the, the, the global warming issue, uh, onto my um, uh, presentation about um, the uh, learning from disaster. The disaster, I, I mean to think, namely the uh, memory disaster, either high tech or ex uh, industrial accidents, uh, nuclear power plant on one hand, and plus a little bit about uh, the nuclear uh, weaponry, namely, and you can see there's a growing uh, concern about the uh, nuclear uh, arm race in different parts of the world. Uh, uh, run, run by Mr. Trump and Miss, Mr. C and then Putin. And also, we got the uh, disaster um, happening, namely, it seems we are both heading towards another super cold war coming, namely, with arms race. And that will give uh, the background or backdrop of, of the disasters. The disaster happened as a natural disaster, but also as a, also a man made one. <coughs> Global climate change is, is undoubtedly, and that is uh, evidently showing that we have the, the window of, uh, of opportunity will be lessened and lessened into. It's talking about a decade time, we need to do something here. Yeah. It doesn't seem we have the structure, we have the um, uh, instrument to do it, yeah. either politically or even in terms of the uh, so called scientific understanding. Yeah. There's still debate going on between the, the uh, those agree they have climate change and those that it doesn't agree. And then you plus the economics, plus the economics and politics about the climate change or the anti-climate change. Undoubtedly, there's interesting debate about sustainability. And, and then 
may I respond a little bit to the previous presentation about the Taoism, which I think is implicitly at the same time create diversity. It's interesting in a way, uh, although uh, Taoism or some understanding about the simplicity or the nothingness, but in fact, the nothingness is a mirror image of a much more uh, interestingly interplay of the uh, diversity in terms of culture, in terms of race, in terms of we end up uh, maybe the next presentation by Professor Mesa about the, the love. Ending up with the tolerance, you need the understanding, uh, and you really have the ample spaces to try to capture the differences. I think one of the interesting things about, uh, about the initiative have been, have been undertaken by the, by the Japanese government, particularly the, the post-war Japanese government, is trying to be engaging in global events yeah, in a very active way, particularly in terms of uh, climate change, the Kyoto Protocol, and uh, the biodiversity uh, convention about uh, on the, um, biodiversity. Uh, the last round was in uh, Nagoya. Okay. And then you find interesting, and plus, the, the, the interesting learning to God, the learning from disaster, you got the, uh, the, the reason one is that framework of disaster and mis, uh, reduction, which in fact, since then, you got a more and more um, precautionary approach towards the uh, natural disaster in terms of earthquake, tsunami. Yeah. I think there's a positive uh, development over, over, over this end. So people are responding uh, to what disaster, either natural disaster or man-made disasters. There's a collective effort trying to capture the one. And so the politics and economics of the prevention of the climate change or prevention of the uh, disaster doesn't match, particularly in the last uh, five years, you see the, 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 the global uh, change towards a much more uh, confrontational, uh, not so cooperative, all kinds of uh, multilateral a uh, multilateral agreement on uh, doing something in cooperation mode has been boiled down into popul populism, into the so-called right-wing politics, either in the state or even in Europe, which can be seen from the uh, issue about refugees, particular refugee from the war uh, zone in uh, Syria. And you can see the, the misunderstanding or the uh, discrimination against uh, refugees has been uh, phenomenal has been reshaping the whole um, efforts about uh, multilateral or international cooperation uh, for um, humanity, uh, for, for human humanity issues, refugees, and then the hunger and the, and the sustainability issue, okay. So I, I don't go into the details about the learning all from the from the from uh, the last round of the um, Fukushima. For sure, we also have a very interesting uh, development at the same time, uh, not just in terms of the natural disaster, in terms of the, in terms of the uh, active engagement, but from a democratic point of view, from the um, population dynamic point of view, you can see there's a global uh, aging issue here, namely people living longer and longer, and they do have the necessary support. Uh, to, to deal with the uh, advanced aging uh, society, uh, the senior uh, senior member of our society are uh, being left out into in the caring system. We used to be um, supported by the family system. The family system has been um, challenged by the way in which uh, work and life uh, work life are not uh, work and family are not uh, so uh, so well organized. So you got the issue about how we take care of the. Uh, Senior though uh, during a economic uh, difficult time. I know it goes into the, the, the initiative uh, NPO NGO development after uh, 1995 Fukuoka. Uh, yes, you can see that the last 20 something years there's a huge, huge development of uh, NPO and uh, people initiative and civic active uh, engagement. Uh, helping each other around the world, particularly the younger generation, uh, particularly young people, they tend to work in a, a different uh, dimension if compared with uh, those who are uh, born in the 50s and 60s, yeah, which are retired now. One of, one of such interesting uh, developments, you can see the, the interesting part about 
so rege uh, rege uh, rejuvenating the social, namely rejuvenating how people interact in terms of not just in terms of uh, civil uh, activism, not just in terms of uh, volunteerism, but also in terms of the way in which uh, the experience and the resources are shared across the time and space, which in fact not just share but also generate a, a very interesting uh, phenomenal economic activity named the shared economy, like Uber, uh, Airbnb, that sort of activity, namely um, there are certain uh, economic benefits coming out from the generosity, which parallel uh, to the uh, altruistic uh, uh, volunteer work at the same time, which some of the uh, yeah. activity going on in many, uh, in fact, many of the charitable organizations and some of the uh, wealth organizations are turning into so-called social enterprise, which means uh, they, they are not just doing the social activity, but also they are uh, earning money as well. In the, in, the, in the enterprising the social or social enterprise, which way you go. Sometimes you can see the, the, the interesting thing about the share economy, how, how the people use the Uber and how the people interact with the um, Airbnb. You can find interesting uh, development. It's both go both ways. You can enterprising, making money from the social sharing, but also you can do the social good with a uh, institution with a uh, economic instrument or with a commercial instrument or business instrument of a corporation. You find this interesting. The the the, 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 the both both way work into each other's uh, turf, so to speak. And then you find the, the interesting thing: which way you go. Yeah. And then all these new ideas are coming up, not from the established um, uh, um, a business organization. Most of these are coming all the way from those who are twenty and thirty. We go back, you no know, need to go back, you use what your social uh, network site now, Twitter, Line, Facebook, all those are a very simple ideas um, developed by those who are before 30, so, so to speak, yeah. in terms of age. So they have this sort of sharing experience, this sort of share, by sharing experience, by sharing of the information, you generate, you can up. It generates a business. And this is interesting in a way. We are not just rejuvenating the social, we are enterprising the social. Meaning social activity becoming the basis of the business model. Whenever, whenever you use Google, whenever you use Line, whenever you use uh, Yahoo or Facebook, you are helping them, you are helping Facebook or Line uh, for free. Okay, in, in a way, we, 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 are, we are also in some form of slave, oh, we are slave, okay? We are slave for them, in a way. I know some of my students, they have got uh, 500 followers in Facebook. Yeah. If, if, if he got 500 followers, he, he or she could be a manager already, managing a company. But in fact, he still warranty every day to, to, to act on the thing. And that's create interesting thing about what's going on, enterprising and social, but social will come and making money. Oh, well, so call nothingness. And they find an interesting thing going on at the same time, uh, taking into both, namely the cultural um, heritage, the Wao or the Isuna, uh, you find the interesting thing about the, the cultural um, idea about human relationship can extend to the show, to the harmony between people and nature, which has been interestingly developed. In the, in the, I think in, uh, almost 10 years ago, if you go back to the Nagoya uh, conference on uh, biodiversity, there's an initiative experimental project called what they call the Seito Uchi, or the Seito Yamato project, which initiated the, the borderline between the, 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 the urban uh, core and the natural environment. There's a middle zone there, and how you can protect um, that sort of uh, uh, Sato Yama or uh, Sato Uchi projects going on. And some of the projects are, I think, in Kawata, uh, uh, where are we? In, in, in Fukui or other uh, Japanese cities area. But interestingly, you think the, 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 the cultures or the understanding of one's culture or different culture and rich the protection environment and reaching our understanding or feeling, not just understanding, but also the feeling of being part of the system. I think that's a little bit uh, paraphrasing what the idea of Taoism. Taoism seems to be so-called nothingness and the nature and the emptiness and what the blank 
becoming interesting. But also, there's also gone through the ideas how to interact, how to engaging into the um, into the uh, biodiversity, biodiversity or sustainability uh, discussion and, and, and development. I know some of the NGOs, some of even some of the uh, active uh, more militant uh, environment NGO like Greenpeace or Sea Shepherd, they are trying to exploit the basics of our blood tie, of basics of our cultural uh, heritage, the embeddedness of, of who we are, then extend that part into the into the, the, the moral obligation of an individuals of an individual people to to protect the environment, to protect uh, the living spaces we have. I don't go into the interaction about the graphics and we will be discussed more. But at the same time we find all this uh, in, a, in, a, in a very different um, discussion if compared with uh, 500 years ago. Yeah, since since uh, the, the um, what since the uh, Gutenberg's uh, woodblock printing 500 years ago, along with the what they call the Martin Luther King's uh, Reformation movement, namely the printing industry. But now we have a new type of uh, printer, new type of thing called uh, digital uh, communication or mobile communication or in the cloud. That sort of uh, spontaneous. Uh, real time, on time, it just is fits into uh, not just virtual reality but also online reality. You watch a TV or come uh, in movie now. You have got CGI, VFX. In a way, uh, one of the interesting thing is, in fact, we don't we, we might not we we just need to have a conference anymore, yeah, because all can be captured by YouTube and keep a live podcast. Respond, and that's international uh, thing which uh, generate new types of um, debate, and then the issue move on faster than we expected. Namely, the idea of collective action uh, for wrong reason or for right reason could be uh, mobilized within a very short time frame. Some scholars they refer to this as a some call what you call a compressed, super or hyper uh, modernization. You press everything into the the, 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 the within a short period of less than one year, the transformation uh, goes on, and then the consensus move on. It's the reason why I put the the radar and some of the antenna. So I don't go into the, the, the details about the discussion uh, because I'm waiting for the bell or something. Yeah. So one of the interesting thing is uh, more and more of the. Uh, Debate are now around individual responsibility towards uh, the common goods, namely environment, uh, climate change. But at the same time, you find interestingly that two the parallel system going on, namely although emphasizes the, the sustainability, the uh, human species, or the uh, natural species, or the about diversity. But at the same time, you find also interestingly we also talk about I know some of. My college at my university trying to do something interestingly by spending more and more money to AI, artificial intelligence, and buying big data, selling big data. Okay, they are trying to do something great, meaning they can have all the mathematical calculation and a computer, supercomputer, helping them to, to pinpoint what sort of thing uh, we are going to do next. Many individuals, as, also, also as collective. At the same time, you find a very interesting uh, phenomenal development. It go back, it go into a new area, namely spending money on AI and big data and deep learning. Plus, you know already, we discussed this in the last uh, ten years, namely the uh, bio biomedical reengineering, gene editing or gene uh, whatever, and then you've got all kinds of possibility going on with. The money goes into the research and also the intellectual property rights, namely the right to, to get the money. And you have Apple, you have to pay for the Apple right, okay? Because pay for everything, okay? Window, you fix win, window, software. And then you find interesting debate going on. We are 
basically moving into a new area, namely everything have a price tag seems to be uh, more interesting. If you write the human 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 values, okay, I think it's much more easy to get money if you to do to do a computer science AI big data research and asking them to give you a few thousand dollars for 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 what for checking the human human values on something, okay? Which is interesting in a way because the system, and that's interesting for me, the systematic development may be challenging the ideas of what we have discussed so far, namely uh, the ideas of um, humanitarianism, the ideas of Taoism, the ideas of something we share common use. Because the system, the systematic momentum or the dynamics are now moving into the area where, where the price set goes or with the price set even for the tragic store uh, tragic beginning of the uh, gene editing happening really happening or unluckily happening uh, to be in a to be in in, in a place uh, no one uh, thought that that would happen but in fact it happening okay yeah you go back to all all, all the debates so even last yesterday i got a class in the afternoon before i came here to ask me what happened to China? What happened there? Why they have there? So clever to make something nobody dare to make. Okay, it, it seems that they are, they, according to the news, some of them read the news. Okay, the gentleman, the, the editor. Okay, the editor. Okay, gene editor. Okay, editor. He said he was doing for something good, for love. We were <laughs> when I read, we read your your paper, love. Okay, that seems to be a good case. Okay. <laughs> You can a justification that you can make another baby because I love baby. I cannot have baby, so I love baby. So, so what? This is my moral, moral or ethical ground for doing something. I think if I if I if I'm editor, in fact, we everyone seems to be editor. If you if you check the bio chemical about uh, uh, genetic development going on now, I think it will likely paralleling the. Information communication with new media technology, namely the user becoming the creator. You use mobile phone, you also you create image. You are also creator. You say when well, once you forward your, your email or forward something to someone, you're the creator. Not just the creator, but also you are the guarantee. Okay, your friend read your email, IG or Facebook because you, not because of the name. Okay, because you, I will read your email. I trust you. Okay, so you send me any email, I'll check. So you become a. Okay, that's good. Nothing else. No, it's a. Okay. It be. <laughs> Time stop. This is the ship up. Okay. The machine, problem. No problem. Okay, don't worry. Okay. I heard <laughs> so he's not <loved> machine. <laughs> so one of the interesting things about. I think it will likely that uh, the technology will be coming. Uh, the technology could be seen since the technology is, is, is designed to be bought, to be sold, to be used. So I, I don't think that the biotech, the biotech will be, will be, will be, can be or will be or can be uh, controlled by any authority anymore. You know, just like when you create when you Facebook and you can create anything you like. Okay, I think it will be similar, but it may take a little bit of time, but which is a little, a little bit different from the from the information technology, from the new media we have. If you have new media, every one of you are the creator. You do use it, but you also add up the most important part of the new, new, uh, new media, not the media, the social aspect. That makes social media become important. The, the most important part is not the media. The most important is the social part. Namely, which is very different from the, 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 the NHK, uh, different from the broadcasting industry. The broadcasting industry, the mass media, the broadcasting, okay. But you can shut off, you can switch, you can you unplug, then it's gone. But one of the interesting things about the, the new media, particularly social new media, is everyone is a creator. Now, I think it would be the same for many types of technology. Once technology is uh, going, into a much more uh, what you call uh, mass mass production or mass consumption, and you, you can go back all the way to what 
or many types of uh, medical procedure now you can you can bought and use easily. Uh, you just name uh, what I think, uh, family planning, uh, what kind of blood pressure, uh, blood pressure and measuring BMI, and you just use uh, the scale of Danita. Uh, I think it's very affordable. Okay, you can do anything about that. But that will be the spread of the, of the new types of, of 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 discovery and revolution, which is much more fundamental, perhaps, because social media at the, at the end can have the still the social control. Namely, we are the creator. We can control who message we can forward to, and you can check. But the interesting thing about uh, biotech will be much more. Uh, interesting, much more uh, permanent. The creation will be permanent. Just imagine, okay, just imagine if, if, if you're an architect, you build a building, then you can demolish a building and you can rebuild. But what happens if you can, if you make a human being, there's also a second call for ethical, you cannot kill a human being. And that's the, the challenge for many types of uh, uh, biomedical uh, researchers and advancement. Not just the gene editing. The same apply to to some of the uh, thing we at this at this stage. IPS the same. I think IPS is the same. You know, the IPS has been getting a lot of money uh, funded by the government because becoming a national champion, a national champion for the tech technology in Japan. Which is same if you take twenty years ago, you've got a national champion for for some company. Okay, um, Siemens for the. German government for Germany, and then you have got the uh, different so-called national champion for for moving the technology up. Okay, and you can see all the branding, namely Volkswagen, GM, GE. They are sort of national champion. Each country requires a sort of requirement because the country has to be has to develop. In fact, the, the, the national champion argument coming back again. In the, 20th, in the 21st century, it was being competitive, broken down, or somewhere in a lot in, in from from last from from from, from 1990s and then almost 20 years. But all the issues are going back. Each government trying to be the the, the what they call the develop own national technology strategy. If you situate that one into the case of the happening from now on in China, you will see. I don't think that the issue will be. Will, will, will be stop, stoppable in China because the whole main, uh, what they call the orchestration of the technology for Chinese technology is trying to be, the Chinese will be the champion of uh, what technology but also champion of cultural understanding as happening in the Confucian Institute set up by the Chinese government, funded by the Chinese government extremely uh, uh, political oriented, extremely uh, ideological orient oriented. Okay, some part of confusion. I think the same applies um, for Xu, I think Taoism will be the next one. Yeah, so-called national check, okay. National champion for, for philosophical, for that sort of thing is interesting. The fundamental, you're asking the basic question about, perhaps I, wrong, I asked the wrong question or right question, historically in the last, in the last hundred years, this is the 100 years after the First World War and 1918. If you take 100 or even 150 or 300 years, you will see the interesting thing about country or nation state becoming the major player in terms of all kinds of economic activities, particularly in national champion, particularly in defense industry. Yeah. All the things we have now, uh, GPS are uh, coming up from the DOD, from the USA, okay, all the satellite are uh, from avionic, that's all aviation. You know, we are part of it, yes. You see, even the nuclear power plant for sure. Nuclear power energy, you can see all the history of the nuclear plant up to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and then all the things to stop, trying to stop that one, but now it moved into the nuclear uh, plant to see civilian use. And then you got the problems in Fukushima 60, 60 years later. 50, 60 days. Yeah. And that's interesting, you find the debate going on. I think it's time to be stopped and then, <laughs> yeah, systematically, okay, this is, 
So if any question, uh, you are more than happy to comment. I'm still changing because what happened last week is it just shocked me and I have to be prepared. Also for the uh, HECO class about Chinese, okay, most of still ask what happened to China. Yeah. Okay, can you stay there, please? Yeah. Um, so uh, it's now a ten minute, uh, as a ten minute period of discussion uh, with me, and I'm going to do it in this way. I have about uh, fifteen questions for him. Oh, fifteen. And so I'm going to ask uh, in a dialogue manner. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yes. No. No. Or. <laughs> Open I, end and. Because uh, okay, I know you for almost twenty years, and you never give a yes/no answer. <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, I'll stay here. <laughs> You're still here. But the bell is you know. You always say yes and no. You give a reasons. So, firstly, in Confucianism, is there an apocalyptic view or tradition in Confucianist philosophy? Because apocalyptic philosophy includes things like uh, Judeo-Christian Islamic thinking has in the end of the world an apocalypse, end of time, a linear progression. But uh, does Confucianism have an apocalyptic view? And one of the interesting things about Confucian and, and Taoism in to the same extent, namely it was, it was the idea, I would treat it as a history of ideas, a history of something, Since, which is very different from the uh, Christianity or the uh, Jewish uh, Christianity because the, the, the ideas of Jesus Christ and the Savior and the idea of separation of a, a church and the state in some form, the end of historical processing, you have institution. The institution has institutionalized and makes sense, but for the Confucian and also it is certain for Taoism, it's a very interesting idea. Anyone can be easily uh, take it for 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 for, for, for a very simple reason. Uh, for different reasons, I don't know, but it can be generated with different uh, different diversity. If if it has some, you can see the I Ching or the you can see a Tai Chi, and then you can mention any any of the, the national flag of Korea. Okay, 64, 64, two, one, two, four, and then four, four, and sixty-four, and then there are different combination, you know, cosmology, which is that is more systematic institution, right? But confusion and I'm not sure because he's a very smart guy, but he's a lot of things. But not apocalyptic. What about Taoism? Does Taoism have a view of the apocalyptic? The apocalypse, because flowing with nature. If I just flow with nature, then there's no apocalypse. It's just yes. a, a there are cycles. Cycles. A cycle. Cycle would be we take care of the reincarnation of the Buddhist one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Oh, I thought it was one thing. And thank, thank you for your answer. You have yeah. Been, uh, and then the apocalypse <laughs> for who? Because uh, you talked about the apocalypse of, for example, climate change. So if I'm a Siberian farmer, climate change is good for me, isn't it? Isn't climate change good if I'm a farmer in Siberia? Because it gets warmer. It's required adaptation uh, mitigation. If you got a mitigation and adaptation should be fun. In most of the case, the, the, the mitigation and the adaptation process is uh, structurally uh, at the disadvantage of the disadvantaged group. For the poor in country, for those who are not, uh, uh, for those who are not um, strong enough in the, in the existing social system. So for the rich guy, for the rich or for the rich and powerful one. Climate uh, change might be good, it might be good, it may be good. Yeah. So yes, we have, a, for example, one of our participants is from Chuk State in Micronesia, and some islands such as the Marshall Islands are under one or two meters above sea level, for them it's an apocalypse. Yes. So, that's, so for different people, it is uh, an apocalypse. So do we... Sometimes we hear that every challenge is an opportunity. Sometimes people tell you, you probably tell the students if they have bad news, it's a challenge, you have to study harder, it's a new opportunity to retake your exam. So is an apocalypse uh, an opportunity? Apocalypse is more like the end of all, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Game over for all. 
and that's a, and the, the following is a game of plus. In the Judaism, you've got the Judgment Day, yeah. which is the, 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 the sort of hangover. But I say it's end of all, that's a problem, end of all. End of all meaning that game over, I think the Third World War, you know everyone. I think it's a predictable already. 60, uh, 70 something years, uh, 73 years ago, since Hiroshima and Takasaki, everyone knows that it's a Third World War come, everyone gone. And that you can interestingly think maybe the only thing happening after the Second World War, with a brief period of five years after the Second World War, we got all the interest, interest instruments coming up. Uh, Universal Declaration Universal of Human Rights, uh, Refugees, uh, Unixia, and then you got the Japanese Constitution. Mm -hmm. After that, you got the Korean War, then the Game of and then the, 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 the other ideas of helping the communists, the togetherness, to, to get away from the nuclear uh, atomic bombs at the global scale is gone. No one concerned anymore. So if I was a, uh, I'm a mammal, and you're a mammal. Yeah, we are. You're with mammals. Mm -hmm. But we're killing the, the biggest mammal in the world. That's and the problem. however, the, the apocalypse 65 billion years ago, uh, no, sorry, million years ago, the big meteor in Mexico mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah. wiped out the dinosaurs was an apocalypse for most reptiles, but not all reptiles, yeah. but an opportunity for mammals like us to develop. So, even an apocalypse of a nuclear winter, maybe it's an opportunity for some. But the problem, no. the, the problem, what the, the, the problem of the disaster at the present stage is no more the outsider. We're not, not talking about something outside the system. You're talking about so called inside genocide, yeah. self self killing each other, and that's the problem. We are, are killing each other by high tech. <clears throat> by all kinds of new development. Yeah. The plastic one is for sure, plastic uh, particles. Already, you know the fish eat the plastic small and then we eat the fish and then we have got something, we have become part of the plastic system, yeah. like the chemical industry. Or we have partly plastic already. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, enjoy the plastic. Um, Another feature that was uh, interesting in your paper, and a theme that's gone through your work in the last 20 years, is engagement, community engagement. And so, disasters are an opportunity for communities to come together. We see this in every country. And also, what's interesting is in the commentaries that countries make, they always say, our country, <coughs> our community, is so wonderful because we come together after a disaster. So every every community that's affected by a disaster, you come together. But also it's used in terms of a nationalism and a local yeah, yeah, yeah. issue saying, we are special in Fukushima because we came together. We're special in Kumamoto because we came together. We're special in uh, each disaster and so on. And actually it's not special. Human beings come together because we have to and it's a wonderful thing. So that, so the dualism, is it a dual nature that there is both a positive and negative, a yin and yang in each thing that we do? Could I read the dualism to develop it and say, there's actually a yin and yang in most things. And the question is, in the really bad apocalypse, let's say the judgment day, terminal, Apocalypse, let's say, uh, maybe there's less chance for a positive. But the regular apocalypse that are localized, there is a positive and a negative. It's not that we should encourage it, and it's not that we should try not to avoid it. Um, and then the other thing you mentioned is a risk society. So, do we want to live in a society that is very boring? Or do we want to live in an exciting society? So, for example, I lived in Bangkok for nine years. And Before the flooding? During the flooding. During flooding as well. You say what? You say So, I love, uh, love Thailand because it has a yin and yang. It has a chaos and order. And it has everything. Whereas some societies, such as Singapore, seem to... to sterile to organized. And uh, Japan is interesting because it's actually 
from the surface may look like it's very organized, but actually Japanese people's behavior is very interesting as well. <laughs> and it actually is more like Thai in that sense. That so it's, you, uh, you, you, you refer to the giant Nissan? Yeah. No? Sorry, I'm going to say. You refer to Nissan, the big enterprise, okay, oh, yeah. French, and which is un, un, surprise everyone, okay, all the way around the world, still you can have this sort of thing. Yeah. Well, corruption is everywhere. Corruption is universal. So that's. Uh, <laughs> Um, and also everyone is trying to escape the tax man, I guess that's common human failing uh, of most people. So some questions then for you, uh, would you like to reply before we open? I think one interesting thing about, um, in fact I'm not so positive, but I try to make some positive because um, although I, my work has gone through most of the interesting part about civic engagement and how the people responded to differences. Mm -hmm. And then go back to the, uh, the, the, the very basics about uh, social, meaning interaction, so, uh, um, human being, how people interact with each other, helping each other, and that is natural title, um, which I use the word more term in terms of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Positive reciprocity, okay. Namely, interaction with something bigger than us, namely helping artists. And that's the, the fundamentals of my uh, Bias. Although I, I can I can tell you some of the places they never learn, <coughs> so the tragedies repeat, 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 repeat. Because just because maybe institutionally, uh, because system is not open up, or maybe you can see some uh, I say failure of the state, a failure of the economy, failure of the society, and you can see this around the world, and this is a. a major sources of instability, uh, forced migration, refugees. And that's the thing we have to do as a... I think not just we, I think the younger generation, they have more sense than us. Yeah. But they don't have opportunity, that's, that's the issue. Yeah. But they have opportunity to develop something much more interestingly. Yes, some of my students are working on very interesting uh, social enterprise projects. Yes. I, I, I don't see my lifetime can, can, can see how successful they are, but I think they are moving into direction of articulating and enhancing the the, the, the the goodness of the human human being. Thank you. I'd like to open it to the, the topic questions to the the group who would like to develop the discussion. Questions please? I'll pass the mic. Who would like to ask a question? No, I can ask a question. Yeah. Uh, you, you referred to this uh, recent case in Hong Kong. Uh, what is your prediction of, uh, you know, what, what will be the aftermath of this announcement? Do, do you think this person will lose the ability to work, or do you think he will do more, or do you think other people will come and do more? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? I think the, the, the weapon, the, the weaponry of uh, biomedical uh, advancement are now in the hands of the scientists. I don't think any regulatory system works. If, if it was even interesting, if you really look at the scientific discovery in the last uh, hundred something years, just uh, mere, just check with Nobel, Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize as an indicator. Before the Second World War, you see, uh, basically most of the scientific discovery are free for use. Okay, after that one, you add on the price tag with info, uh, with uh, co uh, patent, copyright, and you, you you match with the price to keep them not quiet, to keep them uh, okay. You got scientific discovery, you earn the money, then you sh not shut up. You follow some rules. Okay, you follow some rules. You keep them at the bay, that namely. If you got the patent, you follow something. Either the patent are controlled by the pharmaceutical company or patent controlled by something. You have a system in place, not just intellectual property right as a right, but also as a right to control the use in terms of payment, in terms of money, in, not just in terms of money, also in terms of year. Copyright for books, you got 50 or 30 years. Now you've got more Beatles. And some of the movie now is the end of the 50 years and then everyone can use Beethoven and Mozart, okay? But now, you keep that one as a time, time, time capsule to keep them 
the, the scientists are discovering in the place by paying the price. I'm not sure it's paying the price or not. But now if you find this, this scientific discovery is now enhancing the empowerment of individual scientists. And you can see the same apply to Iran, Iraq. I think the nuclear technology is not difficult. The, the most difficult technology is how to fly something from one place and, and start the war. Okay, anyone can do this. Can be terrorists now. The technology is, in a way, making the user can be can becoming greater. What are you? I think information technology, new media, you can see. But will uh, other types of technology, biotech, or other types could be the follow the same line of development, namely the user or the patient becoming the doctor. I think it's possible now. And you can see the development of the about empowerment of the patient right, empowerment of patient to assess the procedure. One, you got the pharmaceutical, you got the drugs prescription, you know what kind of side effect. The interesting part is the the, the technological part, the scientific part is knowledge is just cognitive. It doesn't tell you the right and wrong. And that's the fundamental issue. But historically, if you go back 500, 600, or 1,000 years ago, the science and knowledge were kept in the Western tradition by the church. And you got a Galileo, and then you got a quarrel with the church. That was another sort of containment. But now I don't think it will stop anything. I think in China. I think it's probably not in China. The probably other part of the country which has access to this sort of technology easily. You can see the, uh, what they call the democratic profile of most of the PhD posts, PhD in the most advanced country around the world about scientific discovery. Most of the uh, postdoc, basically you're talking about all are from the country, not from USA, you're talking about other countries. And the, 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 diff, the diffusion or the spread of technology will around, around different part of the political uh, regulatory frameworks. China, I, I, China will this, take this case seriously, but, but at the same time, they take the seat, not, not just this case, but the scientific breakthrough seriously. And that's the problem part. When the state sectors enter into this arena, and the states have an agenda, they need to develop something on their own to be competitive. And that's create a problem. And the state is not an open society. And then you create more oh. question mark. Thank you. OK. Well, th thank you very much <laughs> for excellent presentation. We will uh, present a paper. The title, The Logic of Time, vis-a-vis -vis the Logic of Space, Nishida, Tenebi, and Whitehead in comparison. Professor. I don't understand. It's too difficult to understand. It's but it's not so difficult. <laughs> the difference between Nishida's idea of topos as absolute nothingness and Kanabe's one of relative conversion in action within the same ambit of the Kyoto school. While Nishida's idea of uh, topos stems from his own unconscious deep structural consciousness rooted in the agricultural society, based upon the stable balance. Kanabe's logic of electric conversion reflects the changing time in history. Nishida takes the position of intellectual intuition or, or contemplation, whereas Kanabe stands by action to transform a given actuality into a formative ideality in and through self-negation. 
Nishida's foot might be still static in character, despite his allegation of the formation of the historical world. On the contrary, Tanabe's is more dynamic due to the perpetually creating activity of conversion. This might correspond to the two different standpoints of one and the same Buddhist camp, i.e. the Lotus Sutra, which is divided into two parts. One is the standpoint point of contemplation of truth, and the other the perspective of the revelation of eternity. The former pertains to the historical horizon of Shadui appearance and the latter the original position of eternal essence. The logical method is alternative. Either everything is embraced in space or time revealed truth in process. Tanabe is akin to Hegel, Heidegger, and Weide in the tendency towards time, in contrast to Nishida's propensity for space and Einstein's static view of the universe. There are two types of thought in the history of human ideas. One is the logic of space and the other the logic of time. Nishida's thought is mainly elaborated from a projective geometrical perspective. And hence, it is not accident for him to take his ultimate position of absolute nothingness as topos. On the contrary, Tanabe Jews, even uh, mathematical uh, truth, not as eternal study, but rather as a self developing movement in the historical process in terms of the perpetually transformed formative change in the mediation of the past achievement through conversion in negation. What these ethics to exhibit the self-realizing movement of the fundamental principle of absolute negativity in history, likewise Hegel, in such a way that going to the future is coincident with returning to the past origin, i.e the essential self in taking shapes of the individual existence and the social totality in local negation, attaining the state existence and more in the last resort. Miki also attempts at constructing the logic of history as imagination with the help of the Marxist historical material basis despite his common standpoint of experience to Nishida. In contrast to Plato's eternal ideas as stated in the atemporal transcendent dimension above the actual human world, there might be the evolutionary biological model behind Aristotle's concept of entelechia as a dynamic unity of potentiality and actuality in the self-realizing movement. This Aristotelian prototype of idea might also be behind Hegel's notion of history as God's self-manifestation and self-realizing movement. While most uh, Einstein and Nishida pertain to the geometrical logic of space, Tanabe, Watsuji, Miki, and modern eternal cyclic cosmology are subsumed under the temporal process of evolutionary development of essence in appearance. Although Karl Barth's theology emphasizes the pre-existence of Jesus Christ in the eternal dimension above, above history, Mortman and Panem are in the vertical dimension of eternity into the historical horizon with the expectation of the fulfillment of the kingdom of God toward the future, together with the second coming of Christ from the Judeo-Christian traditional 
apocalyptic perspective. Heidegger's anticipation of the last god in the inauguration of a new era at the other beginning, vis a -vis the first beginning in the early Greek age of Western metaphysical history. My process, rather than complete reality, which may be value and static in meaning. Windelbank may correspond to the Buddhist doctrine of Buddha in that although everyone has the Buddha in a position of pure potentiality as a principal possibility, it is quite difficult to actualize the Buddha as its original essence on the level of factual possibility. There arises a series of different stages to the final attainment in practice. In pure potentiality, human beings are situated in natural inactivity with symmetry. Whereas in the process of activity of attaining the food, the symmetry is broken in the direction toward the self-realization of the latent essence in the space-time existence of personality. To become a Buddha is a self-realizing process of movement in virtue of practical activity of the Bodhisattva. The underlying principle is absolute nothingness or emptiness of self-transformation or change between potentiality and actuality in a dynamic movement of the individual action to realize its own original essence toward the future. Here, it might be analogous to the so-called Higgs fields, which are the two kinds of vacuums. One is inoperative and symmetric, without difference, and the other operative with the, the asymmetric difference. For Nishida, the word God does not mean transcendent being beyond the human world, but rather the infinitely diverse modes of changes in the universe, the manifoldness of changeable phenomena in the cosmos, and the principle of immanence, which is in line with the book of change. In the background of Nishida thinking, Confucianism, Lao Tzu Buddhism are compounded on the past traditional heritage in the position of functional efficient cause, evoking new synthesis with Western thoughts in a creative way for the future self-development of history. In Panabe's view, however, Nishida is conceived of being still confined to the standpoint of contemplation without the socio-historical extension of practice in the full sense. Kanabe extends his scope to the social entity, such as the state existence in terms of the triadic logic of the individual species and the genus, based upon the constant activity of negative mediation of absolute nothingness. Even so, however, Kanabe's conceptual Western speculation, devoid of any imagination, seems to be not favorite for the majority, often for institutional imaginary intelligence. Nishida's God is immanent in the world throughout as pan panentheism. In the case of Whitehead and God, that goes down to even the level of demon in the guise of doing evil and the unification of the opposite to recycle or to reset, revert to the original position might be the same as the eternal return of the self, which is not so expressly expressed for Nishida, emphasizing the historical formation in which the eternal ideas are touched upon and the absolute present. Kanabe's triadic logic and the bearing on the individual's free subjective action by which eternity and history are relatively unified at each present in the direction of forming history toward the future. Being no obstacle but 
finally, to the child. This young Dimas, she spoke from the heart of Friday, joined the natural power of Kaitan Mensch in the direction of moving from the present to the former present, to the absolute present, in which eternal ideas are touched upon in the subject act of making things from the king system made as object. I'll stop here. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Professor Zaki, for your very nice presentation. We really enjoyed your presentation. The paper, according to me, mainly focuses on the logic of time versus the logic of space. Taking two different thinkers, namely Nishida and Tanabe, you are able to examine them in detail in order to show how they complement each other but at the same time they are different from each other. Uh, there are certain observations which I would like to make. Uh, uh, towards the end of your talk, uh, you said uh, that uh, the distinction between the Eastern and Western philosophy is that the Western philosophy talks about being, whereas Indian Eastern tradition talks about nothingness. Now, the problem is, do you mean to say that all Eastern philosophy, especially I am making a reference to Indian philosophy, do they talk about the concept of nothingness? Do you mean to say that is the only concept that which uh, they have been focusing on? This is one question. And secondly, I would like to know from you what is the problem in dealing with the, the notion of being as such. From the time of Plato onwards up to Heidegger, you made a reference to Heidegger. From Plato up to Heidegger, we have been talking about the concept of being or consciousness which is the center for all philosophical discourse in the West. So, what is wrong in dealing with this concept of being? Can philosophers talk about anything apart from the concept of being? Whether we have succeeded in making this attempt of not talking about something which is not the concept of being. And secondly, you have very beautifully pointed out how there is a close interconnectedness between the concept of time as well as the concept of space. But uh, this is not a basic problem for Indian philosophical discourse because they take uh, both uh, space and time together as such. So should we make uh, a distinction between space and time to show that there is a deviation or there is a demarcation between them? And also you made a reference to the immanence of God. Very beautifully, uh, very beautifully uh, explained that. Now that immanence of God, normally speaking in Eastern tradition, represents that God who is seen as part of the world. But that is also what we call the transcendental being. Or in fact we talk about transcendental aspects of God as well as immanent aspect of God. No, which is, where is a place for the transcendental aspect of God in your uh, methodology. And secondly, you are talking about the deep structure of consciousness. I have some problem with this uh, usage of the word deep structure of consciousness. For example, the phenomenologists talk about consciousness, but there is no reference to the deep structure of consciousness. Whether Nishida or Tanabe is using this term, deep structure of conscious in a, in, a, in, a, in a modified way or in, a, in some other sense. This I would like to know from you. Then uh, you have pointed out that Tanabe criticizes Western philosophy as search for being or ultimate reality. Now this actually to take me to my first question namely what is the problem in dealing with the, the concept of uh, being as such. And also, whenever you make a reference to Buddhism, you are using the word emptiness. Of course, 
many philosophers and many scholars have been using the word emptiness, but I always feel the exact uh, translation should be uh, uh, what is that? Sunyata. Uh, uh, that actually has got a lot of difference between the emptiness. Of course, though we have been using, like for dharma, we use the word virtue, something like that. So there is a di distinction between the concept of uh, emptiness as well as uh, the concept of sunyata. And I feel the concept of sunyata would be better uh, than emptiness. And finally, I would like to state uh, that uh, the distinction which you made between duality and non-duality, as though these are the only two categories that is available in uh, philosophical discourse. But if you look at the Buddhism, they reject both. That is the reason why Buddha you know, takes the middle path. No? So the Pratidya Samadbhada is a middle path. So why can't you consider this as an alternate to this distinction which you have made between duality and non-duality? Oh, okay. uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, in uh, time, uh, in Indian uh, philosophy, Pancha, uh, uh, the uh, highest principle of the universe, uh, Brahman, yeah. is interpreted as being. being. Yeah. Or another uh, or nothing. So there are different interpretations. So, uh, but uh, in the Indian uh, tendency of thinking, uh, the actual world is uh, has lower uh, reality uh, than Brahma. Uh, the actual world is nothing, uh, uh, like, uh, not a nothing, but like a dream, or uh, like dream. Uh, but uh, uh, true reality is uh, only Brahma. Uh, this is a uh, general, general uh, I understand. So, um, uh, uh, the, the translation of uh, Sunyata, uh, yeah, this translation in English is very difficult. So, uh, in Japan, Nishinan Tanabe, uh, absolute nothing is the time. Uh, but which is uh, very uh, obscure in the meaning for Western people. Uh, this is a literal translation. So this is the problem of uh, different cultures. So, uh, but some American scholar, uh, emptiness is better than uh, negativity or that. So I, I <laughs> went to it this uh, temporarily. And, uh, of course, in Western uh, tradition, uh, being, uh, uh, beside being, uh, nothing is also found in Western uh, philosophy. Uh, but uh, the main, main trend is uh, being emphasized on, emphasized on being. And, uh, even Heidegger says uh, uh, being a nothingness, but uh, his idea of nothingness is uh, very weak in comparison to uh, Buddhist uh, sunyata or absolute nothingness. Uh, still uh, confined to the level of uh, relative uh, opposition between being a uh, uh, But uh, Buddhist uh, emptiness is absolute dimension of uh, being and nothingness. So this is the middle way of uh, thinking. As we are. So uh, absolute nothingness or absolute emptiness in the uh, middle, 
middle position between relative being and nothingness. Uh, yeah, this is quite right. Okay, can I proceed how the floor is open? Do you have any questions? Yeah, please. Uh, do you make a distinction between emptiness and nothingness? Are they the same or are they different? Yeah. Oh, it was enough, enough. This is a very uh, simple uh, question. In translation of the Japanese word into English. Kara and Mu. Uh, so, <laughs> Sora. Uh -huh. Good. Uh, and, uh, but, Sora, sky. Uh, the literary uh, sky does not mean the absolute emptiness or absolute nothingness, but it's only uh, para image. Uh, so, uh, the, so the translation is very difficult uh, uh, when... Uh, so are they different or are they the same <coughs> in, in, in your philosophy? <coughs> nothingness and emptiness? Yeah. I use, I temporarily uh, use the same uh -huh. meaning, uh -huh. but uh, in, uh, in in physics they are very different. In physics, yeah, in physics, space and time are one. Yeah. Space time, yes, yes, not separate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Takafuji, who is one of the uh, graduates uh, who did the PhD with Professor Takahashi. And uh, she's now uh, working in charge of the Kimoto City Office Occupational Health. So thank you very much for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you. I've been working as an really occupational clear. health physician for Kamang the city staff since 2016. Then, when our workers must respond in case of disaster or emergencies, the intervention by occupational health physicians to preserve their lives is the framework of conventional bioethics, for example, autonomy. Would like to consider the ethical principles of occupational health in such a case by taking as example the handling done by the occupational health division of Kumamoto City administrative staff at the time of the Kumamoto earthquake in 2016. First of all, I will look back at the time of the earthquake. In my case, my house at Kumamoto City was partially destroyed. Water outage, uh, outage continued for about two weeks. Two-year-old daughter's nursery school was closed for about three weeks. For a few days after us, the earthquake, I <coughs> was assigned to different the division depending on the need in order to fill the personal shortage as an administrative staff. And from Monday's, I finally returned to my jobs in, as occupational health physician. The Kumamoto City Labor Welfare Division also began to provide care to city employees. We posted information on web message boards and sent notice letters to the department heads so that the staff will not exceed their limit, both physical and psychological. We also posted information about preventive measures against infectious and tetanus, 
and about nutrients to be taken. At the same time, we also conducted health health counseling for 82 people. We got responses from 5,041 people. After being in the questionnaire, employees submitted submitted it to their manager. The questionnaire used SQD, which is a checklist to grasp the stress situation of the affected people from the point of view of PTSD and depression. The questionnaire was created in response to the Great Housing Allergy Earthquake. Also, SQD was originally for interview. It was used as a questionnaire survey after the Chuetsu earthquake in 2004. In addition to original SQD's question, we asked about the disaster damage each individual's conditions of mind and body and about their family in these questionnaires. Regarding notification and utilization of the results, individual response were analyzed and if depression or PTSD were suspected, individual respondents was noticed and notified via the department head. As needed, we recommend consultation with occupational health physician, public health nurses, and a clinical psychologist. From the questionnaire responses, half of the staff members experienced fatigue, insomnia, and anxiety of aftershocks. Staff members with young children or were caring for the elderly or with health concerns showed higher risk for mental malfunction. To be able to provide sustainable service to the city residents, it is vital to ensure safe housing and maintain <coughs> stability in the situation surrounding them and their family. The high risk departments were as follows in public shelter. The shelter staff also did regular work in parallel. In the personal services, and low management capacity and excessively, excessively high workload leading to a sense of unfairness. Through the screening, many voiced the desire to take some time off. We included this in the interim report, which was passed up to section chief and director to disaster management headquarters meeting. By doing so, we finally reach a cons consensus that staff are advised to, to take time off on shifts. However, the maximum level deployment <coughs> means where all employees are to be in active service continued for two months. Um, why did the strain on the staff increase? For example, high demand for house investigations to issue victims certificates because the priority order cannot be decided. Staff in charge of the tax department remained responsive with no breaks. They must also attend to the people who came to help from other municipalities. Municipalities. So, researchers wanted to collect data in some cases, interfered with the lives and works of victims, local official, and good faith researchers. Some criticism arose from reporting on the situation of the staff. City staff. The civil servants hired in public service postponed the recovery from their disaster damage. Now, we will focus on the questionnaire. 
this question is more connected by the way of submitting it to the occupational health staff after the manager enters a subordinate answers to spreadsheet. While on the other hand, the notification of the result to the survey party participant was also carried out through the manager. The reason for the selection of this way was to adjust the position in the disaster response work considered after it had grasped the state of the subordinate to the manager. The effort to summarize the questionnaire was distributed to the respective manager, which also helped reduce the burden on the occupational health department. <coughs> Several employees who do not want personnel and personal inf information to be known to the manager directly in interacted, interacted with occupational health staff. However, because the standard method of summary by the manager, it seems that some people refused to answer or abandon. In the first place, was it justifiable, justifiable to collect individual health information through the manager, which was not for health staff? <coughs> the same is true in you know, this time, but after an intervention, interview with an occupational health physician, some staff may be restricted working against his or her will. Can such a uh, paternalism, paternalistic, um, paternalist open cause it in the sense of occupational health be able to say the good one? In the four principle of IOS, it is important to respect for autonomy of patients. The powerful information about one thing can also be considered merely a category of self-determination of the person himself or herself. And the core of the work with our situation is from confidentiality like, like this. It is basic stance that both the lifting of confidentiality and the catalysis intervention are justified when it is related to someone's life. Someone's life. Mm -hmm. In the ethical code of the occupational health physician, published by the NPO Health Development Science Society in Japan, an occupational health physician may disclose employee health care information to a third party only if one of the following is Namely, when the consent of the employee himself or herself is obtained, when the disclosure is clearly beneficial to the employee, when it is impossible to obtain the consent of the person in question, and the consent of the immediate family, family members is obtained. Then it is obvious that the public interest is significantly impaired if not disclosed, when the information content itself is related to the prevention of serious crimes, and when there is an order of disclosure or submission from the court that we use. In addition, it is described as follows, occupational health physicians, like other physicians, sometimes have an obligation to society so they may have been prior prioritized public interest rather than the interest of the of their individual patients. This may be the case that, for example, when there are various legal obligations such as the notification of infectious disease or drug dependence prescribed in the law. In this case, it is not necessary to consent of the personally the person of the person concerned about the notification and the disclosure to the concerned agency. Also, if there is a high level of, a high level of risk for a worker to be predicted for a disease, it must be dealt with as well. If we rely on this code, we can justify the pre release of 
confidentiality obligation and the paternalistic, paternalistic intervention if it can be related not only to life but also to someone's health and public interest in, or in order to avoid harm to the person and others. <coughs> Professor Fujimo at the University of Occupational and Environmental Health he points out that the occupational safety obligation is given priority over confidentiality obligation of health information in the field of occupational health. He also said when it is just that it is better for the employer, employer to grasp the health information of an employee with an occupational safety obligation. The occupational health physician should positively disclose it. In this case, however, it is necessary to have the consent of the person in question and to disclose it to the necessary health information concerning the health maintenance of the person and the, pro and the proper arrangement or the restriction of employment to the principal. Here again, I look back. Uh, I look back at the questionnaire during the Kumamoto earthquake. Only the person who uploaded the video, the manager, becomes intent to examine the questionnaire. The date of person who does not consent was not obtained. Therefore, there were employees who were not able to receive necessary consideration and professional health. There were employees who had understood the disorder for the first time from the consultation by the screening in another plane and another route too. It is thought that it was necessary to grasp the health, con health condition and the disaster situation of all employees from the beginning and to utilize the information to make the proper arrangement to the disaster response work. The ideal way will be as follows. We promptly conduct a situation survey after the disaster occurring. For all employees and eight employees submit them directly to the occupational health department. It might be ideal to an idea to provide the information and consideration to the manager and the human resource department and the labor management department if necessary after analyzing and judging the result of the investigation. When providing the information, occupational health staff should obtain the consent of the employee in principle, except in cases where there is um, in imminent safety and or health hazard. However, regarding the implementation of the survey, we believe that the respect for the life of the individual and the public interest in for proper continuation of official duties should be given priority over small individual autonomy, regardless of the intention of the individual. The implementation and collection of questionnaire on the inter internet may be more efficient. However, it will inevitably be able that an excessive burden will be placed on educational health staff if interviews with the community with the health and human resources department and so on are promptly implemented. So I want to make a suggestion. From this March, the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare has started the DHID as a new team of experts with lessons learned from the Old East Japan aspect and the Kumamoto aspect. DHID is the for Disaster Health Emergency Assistance Team. This is the framework, the framework in which the new facility support each other in order to maintain the health administration in the event of a disaster. 
he he was dispatched to the first part during the West Japan heavy person ground flight that occurred in July this year. The defeat of the Kumogo City team, team of Kumogo City Group Center went to support the National Prefecture. I was originally thinking that we could use the frame of the heat to support occupational health of administrative, administrative staff. However, it proved to be difficult because the peak period of the heat support and the timing of the occupational health response were different. In addition, it is more desirable for occupational health to respond to the question that knows the whole framework of occupational health and human, human resource and labor. Therefore, in order to protect the life, safety, and health of employees and occupational health staff in the event of a disaster, it is desirable to mutually support the occupational health at the time of disaster by having the support agreement between municipality occupational health department in Pista. For example, and summarize, uh, priority may be given to respect for life, public interests, and large autonomy as the escort principle of occupational health after, after disaster in especially municipality. Of course, it is desirable to respect individual each in small autonomy as much as possible. Therefore, it is important to prepare for mutual assistance from this time. Thank you for your attention and Please tell me about your occupational health effort at the time of disaster in your area, area using this question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing us the photographs of your family. It's yeah. lovely. We open to questions in discussion. So I, I'll start the question. In the time of disaster, every member in the community needs to take care of himself and help the community. So there were not so many occupational health or health professionals, I think, to cope in the time of emergency. How did, did your department increase the number of staff after the emergency? Like now, there are more staff than before, and are there procedures to of the responsibility of the staff members and other health professionals and the community volunteers and other groups? Is it good communication or? Well, among staff and among the community. So next time, did you learn lessons about how to work with the community? Occupational health field is not residents, staff, labor staff. Please speak louder in the microphone. Occupational health field is not only residents, city residents, but also in labor staff. So you know uh, the community in labor staff community? Well, if I'm an employee of a company and my house is destroyed by the earthquake, is it the occupational health of my workplace mm -hmm. should also take care of my family? Oh. For example, in a time of emergency? What happened? Mm. All staff in city hall is um, not, uh, was not cared 
Other, other comments or questions? Mm. Yes, <coughs> Professor Takashi. <coughs> we maybe need a microphone here. Right here, please. Right side of the back. This is a this is my health. As a time of disaster, uh, one respects for life and uh, public interest. Respect for land autonomy and mutual assistance and supporting. Uh, so, uh, my question is uh, in an uh, ordinary situation and in emergent situation, the principles of uh, occupational uh, health efficiency. Uh, principles are different or they are applied differently. There are uh, fixed uh, principles, ethical principles, and, and they are applied differently in normal situations and in uh, invasion situations. Or, uh, there are two principles in uh, one is emergent uh, ordinary station the principles and the second is uh, emergent station principles which is uh, correct uh, I think thank you for your question I think mm, two principles is not Maybe a disaster, this principle provides autonomy principle limited at disaster time, I think. In ordinary time, we, the occupational health principle, respect for not large but also small autonomy. So, so there is no respect for our autonomy in the ordinary principles. Mm. Ah, mm. Large and small. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, in, in the imagined situations, some elements appear clearly. Yeah. And some, some elements so are hidden. Mm. Ah, yeah. Okay. So there are uh, the same principles. Yeah. But applied different in a normal situation and in the first case. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. yeah, so it's, it's good, it's clear. Any other questions? Are there other questions or comments? I think um, it's good that you can share this experience of working in the disaster and I thank you very much for your presentation and for linking theory to practice and how we might balance principles because that's always been a challenge for us in a disaster or normal situation or different culture. Thank you, Taka. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank you. much. So the next uh, presenter is Dr. Takao Shinkai and his presentation uh, is on why is the physical restraint a better way, study from the case of Kelly Savage and he is uh, working in the uh, Kumamoto Medical 
center as a uh, psychiatrist and in mental health care. And so this question of physical restraints is a big question in uh, mental health care. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for introducing me. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Takao Shinkai. I am working at Kanoto Medical Center. My job is social worker in mental health sector. Uh, in Japan, our license is named psychiatric social worker, psych psychiatric, uh, psychiatry. Uh, in Japan, uh, psychiatry is so powerful among mental health sector that no one can blame. Today, I want to discuss about one of the problems about mental health system in Japan. And this presentation is under permission from Kerry Savage's parents. Today, I, uh, the context, contents to talk about today are uh, on the slide. First, does mental health service system of Japan have any problems? Second, why should Kerry have physical restraint? Third, the reason why we keep silence. Fourth, is this ethical issue? Does mental health services system of Japan have any problems? This is newspaper article on 2016. This article was saying that number of patients who have been having physical restraints was getting big, bigger. In 2013, more than 10,000 people were having physical restraints in psychiatric hospitals. The, uh, the, total, uh, the total number in 2013 is twice that in uh, 23.03. This graph is number of physical restraints and seclusion in Japan. According to Ministry of Health and Labor, in these 10 years, numbers, number of physical restraints and seclusions have increased year by year. This number of inpatients get bigger. No, inpatients are gradually decreasing. This graph is number of inpatients in psychiatric hospitals. Mm. 1979, inpatients are about 340,000 people. Mm. 2014, inpatients are about 310,000 people. In the past 15 years, inpatients have decreased by 30,000. Inpatients are gradually decreasing, but seclusion, but seclusion but seclusion and physical restraints are increasing. How do you feel and think about this? What is happening in psychiatric hospitals? Why do inpatients have physical restraints and seclusion? This is comparison of manpower of for general hospital and psychiatric 
hospital. It is clear that manpower of psychiatric hospital is less than that of general hospital. Psychiatric, psychiatric hospital cannot provide good care because of lack of manpower. The lack of manpower, the lack of manpower might come from economic reasons. In comparison, general hospital and psychiatric hospital, it is clear that psychiatric hospitals cannot make money. Inpatients are gradually decreasing, but seclusions and physical restraints are increasing. Alongside, inpatients are having to stay very long days. This graph shows international comparison for staying in psychiatric hospital. About 300 days inpatients have to stay psychiatric psychiatric hospital. It is clear that length of staying in Japan is in very strange state. Inpatients are gradually decreasing in psychiatric hospitals. In spite of them, seclusions and physical restraints are increasing. This can be explained from economic reasons. Comparisons, uh, compi comparing uh, other countries, Japanese mental health system is not better for inpatients. Why should Kerry have physical restraint? Kerry Savage died in last year, uh, 2017, as young as 27 years old. Having been fascinated strong by, he came to Japan. However, due to his mental illness, he was forced to be in mental hospital in Japan. After being restrained nearly continuously for 10 days, he died. Starting of uh, April, uh, Manik stayed at his brother's house. His brother made phone call for police. Kerry was forced to be in psychiatric hospital. According to his elder brother Patrick, he never rampaged. He was ordered to lie down on the bed. He obeyed at hospital. He was quiet. In spite of them, he had to have physical restraint. Tenth of May. Abrupt change. Big breath twice, and then breathing sound became quiet. He opened the heart with his neck facing sideways. There is no breathing, no pulse, according to medical record. And he transport hospital from psychiatric one to general one. 17th May. Kerry Savage died. Physical restraint uh, for 10 days. How was he? What was happening to him? 1st of May, he said, could you set my left hand free? Nurse, uh, I explained to him that restraint was necessary for, to keep safe. Wanting to drink a cup of tea water, 
I gave him some milk. He drank. He could respond correctly to my talking. Fourth of name, noon. He was awakened. Good morning. Talking with calm. Sixth of May, communications good, responding to calling, good morning, he can tell about himself. My talking Japanese is not perfect, but I can understand. My elder brother lives in Yokohama. Seventh, he waked up to calling easy. I want you to set me be free. So, I want my doctor and my brother to discuss about this. Explain to him that doctor would have a discussion with his family. Well, I see, he responded. But it is in a state of excitement of psychomotor, disturbance, hyperactivity, and explosiveness are remarkable. According to medical record, from 13th, uh, 13th of uh, April to 10th of May, for 10 days, the, uh, the above sentences are on the medical record each 8.30. Uh, 16.30 and 23.30. Toshio Hasegawa and me, uh, I discussed about Kelly's death. Toshio Hasegawa is famous for restraint studies and both of us knew Kelly had never had physical restraint in New Zealand. In Japan, he had to have physical restraint, but in New Zealand, he never had physical restraint. Why could be the difference? So both of us visited New Zealand and interviewed his doctor. Seventh October and eighth October. And we visited the uh, Wellington Regional Hospital. Uh, Toshio Hasegawa and I discussed with Dr. Alastair Willis, his doctor. Uh, Kelly was quiet with calm, but he had physical restraint in Japan. He had physical restraint for 10 days after that he died. His doctor in New Zealand doubts whether he needed to have physical restraint or not. <coughs> Other options <coughs> or alternative ways could be possible. Physical restraint is not only way to keep safe. Physical restraint could be violation to human rights. My, hy my hypothesis why should Kelly have physical restraint? Because he was supposed to be in psychiatric hospital in Japan. The reason why we keep silence. Using Sini, I could find many articles and reports about mental health of other countries. For example, mental health and United Kingdom, I could find 39 articles. Mental health and the United States, I could find 40 articles. But mental health and New Zealand, I could find only 15 articles, less than half of For mental health professionals in Japan, New Zealand is not as popular as United Kingdom or and United States. 
for mental health professionals in Japan, physical restraint and seclusion are so normal ways for inpatients in psychiatric hospitals that they do not think restraint and seclusion are unusual. For mental health professionals in Japan, restraint and seclusion seclusions are believed to be necessary for inpatients. My hypothesis. Most of Japanese mental health professionals do not think carries this is wrong problems of mental health system of Japan. So we, including me, think carries this does not deserve to discuss. So we don't have any words, any words to talk about. This is reason why we keep silence. Is this ethical issue? <coughs> when I was 21 years old, I was in ethics course of Kumamoto University. At that time, my elder brother was forced to be in psychiatric hospital for his mental illness. While in hospital, he received violence from the staff. staff. Until then, I had believed medical staffers were good people. After years, I became psychiatric social worker. Most of psychiatric staff are good people, having pride strongly. We do not doubt our ways have <coughs> justice. We only perform psych physical restraint in some cases. We do not know there are nearly zero restraints in New Zealand. We, and we do not want to change daily ways to work through. We should have check system from outside of hospital, especially ethic perspective. But are these problems only from psychiatric hospitals? Why do our Japanese society have physical restraints in psychiatric hospitals? Hospitals, these problems are only for psychiatric professionals. Does ethics not have to discuss these problems of physical restraints? Conclusion Why do Japanese society need physical restraint system for people with mental illness? Ethics should have a discussion about case this. Sometimes we, including me, psychiatric professionals are having pride strongly and believing likeness of psychiatric systems, but not always having self-feeling ability. Difference is on the slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Um, and um, thank you that you took the time to go and talk to the doctors in New Zealand and to share the perspectives there. I'd like to open for any questions or comments. Yes, sir. Asushi, Dr. Asushi Asaiba. Uh, my name is Asushi Asai. Thank you very much for your very um, impressive presentation. I would like to know about, about facts, um, three kind of facts. So why the um, why was Kerry Savage uh, forced to uh, to admit to the psychiatric hospital? This is the first one, and. Um, I would like to know what kind of physical constraint did he have in the hospital. And the third one is that 
uh, what happened to him? I mean, that what is the cause of his death? I would like to know that uh, those facts. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, first, uh, Kerry was uh, manic state, so uh, he was speaking everywhere in his brother's home. So uh, his brother was very um, complicated. So uh, his brother made a phone call to police. But um, Kerry was um, calm at that time, but police took him to hospital. And doctors saw him, and doctors thought he should be in hospital. And secondary, I was forgotten, and the third one, uh, hospital uh, didn't open medical record, so uh, we don't, we don't have, uh, we don't know uh, what was happening to him, and her, uh, medical record was partly changed by hospital. What was the second? Uh, my second question is that what kind of physical constraint did he have uh, during the um, admission? Uh, body and uh, wrist and uh, ankle. Five points. Thank you very much. Thank you. So didn't the hospital have to give the medical record to his parents? Isn't that uh, legally required? Toshio Hasegawa and his parents uh, gather a uh, place. Uh, uh, place. And hospital wa hospital decided to open his medical record suddenly. But medical record wa was already changed. Some some parts. Thank you. Akiko. Yes, Presentation. My name is Akiko Ishihara from Columbia University. Um, I ha I'd like to ask uh, your position before uh, I'm going to the discussion. Uh, so the you your position is more like the pro and con to the physical uh, restraint. Physical restraint. What more like? What is your position? My portion is uh, <laughs> difficult for, for question. As one, uh, one of the professionals, I have to. I think I have have to think about this uh, this problem because I am a part of this problem. Problems because I I am. Professionals mm -hmm. in mental health sector. And I visited New Zealand uh, several times, and I, I love New Zealand. And but our country, Japan, mm, mm, <laughs> he he died in Japan, and very sad. So I want to do something for him. Thank you so much. Um, so, like, uh, I think uh, this is a, uh, of course, ethical issue, but also like uh, this is a problem of the quality of medicine. So, the of course, uh, ethically too, um, if we could offer the better quality um, medic healthcare in better quality, it is better. So we have to think uh, if this. Uh, physical restraint is uh, necessary or effective, but uh, if we have uh, other kind of uh, health support. So my, um, so I think um, 
uh, because uh, I have been working on the quality of the fish uh, psychiatric hospital for 10 years, uh, maybe five years, and also uh, as the same as you, uh, I'm a family member of the physical, uh, sorry, psychiatric patient, and I have been thinking about this issue uh, as a professional researcher and also as a family member. So, um, anyway, so the one, is, one thing is uh, we have to think in this issue as a health quality issue. And so I was interested in what you said in your presentation. Uh, that is, um, so, it, uh, <laughs> medical, uh, most of the psychiatric hospital staff are good people and they don't doubt about the physical constraint. I agree with that. And I was so surprised, um, yeah, uh, when I, I say, I say, saw that scene as a family member, and I noticed uh, my background is conflict transformation. I worked on the uh, trauma and how trauma uh, for the common sense in the community. My opinion is like a staff of psychiatric hospital are good people, but when they go into the you know psychiatric hospital daily life, kind of I think I guess uh, the scene the, what is happening in the hospital day, in the daily life is shocking for them first, but this is traumatic. But sometimes trauma form the common sense, like oh, so that to protect you know uh, the staff heart. So if if the medical staff think this is a problem, this is a problem so traumatic, if they think that every day they cannot bear. So uh, it, it's kind of the, um, yeah, happens in the civil war situation, like after trauma, they make the new common sense. So I think uh, those kind of things happening in the psychiatric hospital, that is my opinion. I'd like to discuss it with you more. What's your, your comments? I would like to discuss about this after. <laughs> okay, Nada, please. Can I have you? Uh, last week, uh, the aunt of my friend, uh, she's Japanese, she's 70 years old, she had a stroke and uh, she was sent to a hospital. Uh, video CT scan, nothing was seen, she was sent back home. She started showing symptoms of dementia, mm -hmm. and she was restless a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they took care of her a few days, then they moved her to Beppu Irio Center. Mm -hmm. She is now there mm -hmm. with those restraints, belt, hands. So her sister saw her and was crying. And I told them, why don't you take her home? Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, you know, we are so busy, we have to go to work, we cannot take care of, uh, take care of her. So, why do you accept this? Oh, uh, you know, the hospital, they don't have nurses, so they, they think this is safe. But the woman is crying all the time and they only give her sedatives. And this is not a psychiatric hospital, it's a neurologic department. And I couldn't believe this, you know. But the whole system is affirming this situation, even her own family. And, they, uh, and I said, well, what, how will you feel if, he, if she dies like this? And no response. So, yeah, big question. The whole system is, I think, so wrong. And I feel so bad about that too. And she's there now. Thank you. Uh, I think it is not only problem for mental hospital but also problems of our society to think about human rights. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, please. Dr. Kodama, yeah. Uh, uh, generally speaking, yeah, thank you so much for your interactive information. You pointed out an important point to us in the following. The Japanese mental health system has a function to justify discrimination against people with mental illness. As you know, generally speaking, Japanese medical clinicians often use both 
termina, uh, both medicines and their, <coughs> and their physical restraint to the terminal care patient as well as inpatient in mental hospitals. hospitals. I think it's easy and lazy that medical doctors simply depend on medicine and physical restra restraint because of lack of manpower. Those doctors should be recommended for neglect of duty and they need re-education of medical treatment as a true medical clinicians. How do you think about my opinion? My, my using word maybe might be mistaken. Uh, lots of um, lots of issues are there, I think. Uh, sorry, I, I can't explain about the well so Would you like to use Japanese? <laughs> you can. Nihongoni. <laughs> okay, good is. えっと、確かにちょっと言葉の まあ、ちょっと大雑把にその身体拘束、ま、特にそのケリーさんの死をきっかけにした身体拘束についてちょっと話をしたかったっていうところが、すみません、そこまで細かく、あの、精査できなかったってところはあると思います。またその、ことについ
not only the crucial point, but also ethical point uh, for social choice, which Ostrom then had not explored in economics. So, so uh, uh, chapter one uh, showed the uh, shipyards and land use in Aso. So, so uh, uh, two maps show the uh, land use uh, in Aso uh, for uh, governance or uh, functioning of uh, shipyards. So uh, people in uh, each residential district uh, keep on governing shipyards depending on land use in Aso. So, so uh, we can uh, see the layers uh, depending on land use. So uh, people in this each this this the uh, residential districts uh, keep uh, sorry uh, firstly uh, so uh, there is a uh, pasture grassland uh, on the top uh, in the mountain uh, the pasture uh, for farm work and food production then uh, the uh, tribe tribe and ここにあの、日本語で言うとススキの葉というような、かやで覆われているということですけれども、え、フェリテライズ、フィードアンドマテリアルズオブルーフフォーハウジングコンストラクション。あ、そうネクストあ、ザ、ザ、ジャパニー
GPRs, uh, because of small income per person in Aso, local government cannot govern uh, CPRs. Uh, the only farmers uh, cannot govern uh, CPRs in the extensive area. Therefore, people who live in the residential districts keep on governing CPRs by cooperative works without returns to individuals uh, since Edwera. So uh, this, show, uh, this uh, table and figure show the population uh, in a city. Uh, the population and population aging rapidly in advancing uh, in a city. So the number and uh, component rates of households which have the rights of commons to utilize grassland in a area. So limitation of uh, governance of uh, CPRs by local governments. Also, uh, local governments worried about the only sustainable of landscape of grassland tried to solve support by volunteers who don't uh, leave as uh, area for governance of only grassland. There are shortages of uh, volunteers. While the government are established by roads and small subsidies, subsidy uh, for governance of CPRs by residential people in community. There is nothing for volunteer institutions or other institutions which uh, local governments conduct for governance of uh, many CPRs besides the grassland in a city. Uh, most of residential people who are not farmers cannot get any revenue depending on participation of cooperating works for governance of grassland without the decision of grassland. But uh, they keep on participating on cooperative works for governance of grassland in a area. This means uh, the increase of families which cannot get uh, revenue by cooperative works for governance of grassland which is one of CPR. So I introduce uh, uh, governance of uh, CPRs in Adobasa district in Aso city. This is uh, uh, my native uh, place. Uh, there are uh, 52 households and population of 137 people in Aso city. The rate of the aged population is beyond 50%. So, uh, Adobase uh, district uh, has uh, some uh, CPR. So, firstly, so this shows uh, Adobase grassland for livestock depending on cooperative uh, works. Uh, so, then uh, there are some uh, trails for access. Uh, from residential district to grassland. So and shrine. Uh, this show uh, this area uh, is residential zone in Adobase district. So then uh, in the uh, residential zone uh, there are shrine uh, irrigation canals uh, from spring to housing area and rice field and uh, roads uh, for rice field and river. So, and a uh, community center. Uh, in the case of Adobase district, uh, according to Sakaguchi, uh, who was a uh, uh, leader uh, in uh, 2009 in this uh, district, uh, 50 families live uh, in Adobase district on uh, 2009. Uh, 50 families have a common rights for governance of grassland. Uh, he made a presentation in Kumamoto uh, Prefectural University so, uh, about governance of uh, grassland. Uh, additionally, uh, there are uh, various commons. Uh, however, uh, additionally, uh, there are various common resources, grassland, water resources, roads, trails, uh, shrine, and forest in Adobase district. Meanwhile, 
they keep on having various mutual aid and uh, the cooperative works in the community. So uh, we can see the photo uh, in Adobase uh, district. Uh, so uh, the members of this community uh, keep on governing uh, this zone in spite of uh, 132 uh, persons. Uh, 50 families uh, which keep, kept on staying during Edo era since uh, 400 years ago have common rights uh, to manage and use uh, these common resources. It is a closed system for permission and usage of, of common resources. Uh, people who move to Adobase district since Meiji era uh, need to apply for permission of common rights to traditional community. Permission is controlled by uh, the strict council system. Traditional community has not permitted the rights for new members because of production of nature and common resources by damaged <coughs> developments. So in the case of uh, water system, I wish to uh, introduce. Uh, the uh, traditional people made water system by cooperative work based on manpower only. So the Canal uh, land uh, inside a uh, community area. So, uh, residential area uh, where traditional community built. So, shows has a uh, uh, lot of uh, sorry. Uh, has a. Uh, Really uh, has a lot of uh, CPRs in Adobase district. So, uh, in the case of uh, shrines uh, for uh, governance of the uh, shrine uh, CPRs, uh, it's very important role. Uh, but I don't uh, uh, explain uh, for shortage of time. There are daily cooperative works for sustainability of the shrine by people. So uh, this uh, table shows uh, uh, cooperative works for governance of CPRs in Adobase district. Uh, so we can uh, understand a lot of cooperative works in a year. Uh, though there isn't a uh, uh, rule that people can retire, there are mutual monitoring and penalty for uh, non-participation of cooperative works because of the population and population aging. In the year, there are not only hard physical works for governance of grassland, road and trade beyond 10 million times in a year, especially when the people don't participate hard cooperative works for governance of uh, grassland and roads in a time they must pay 6,000 yen per watts. Therefore, when uh, people cannot participate hard physical work for many times, they uh, must pay pe many penalty uh, to community. So, uh, though, uh, though people sometimes die, and wonder in the accident by hard work for governance of CPR, there are not uh, compensation. Compensation. There is not insurance against cooperative work for governing uh, CPRs uh, because of shouldering cost of insurance. So, uh, it shows uh, uh, even if uh, the member are not farmer or retired from agriculture. The member must participate in many cooperative works for governance of uh, CPRs. So uh, there is a mutual system for sustainability of uh, community in Adogase. So according to uh, my he hearing investigation to people in Adogase district, there are some people who are donated by participation of cooperative works for governance of CPR. There are examples of death 
and uh, injury per persons, uh, historically and uh, uh, current period too. However, they and their family don't require compensation to the people of Adobase district. Historically, residential people in Adobase district keep on exper experiencing these com cases by the cooperative works, uh, which is daily common works beyond the uh, generation. So when the uh, company uh, which tries to provide the renewable energy and agriculture in the community explains the residential people to permission construction of the families for producer of renewable electric power in May on this year. The some residential people who are leaders in the community reply the following comment for opposite of development of building to produce electricity. We are homeland, which are Adobase district build generation. We are people who are family in Adobase district. Sorry, I don't uh, have time for uh, introduction. So uh, there are the various ethical reports which we cannot subside to uh, explain by sense social choice theory and also theory. Uh, for avoidance of free uh, rider, achievement of high levels, commitment, and self organizing, self governance, CPR, Australia, indicated rules uh, like punishment and mutual monitoring. Exactly, we can observe monitoring and punishment uh, in adverse uh, districts. Uh, meanwhile, in the case of social theory, Theory. While then indicated the reason to scrutiny and uh, the reason in the da uh, demand of justice, he emphasized the importance of reason on thinking about issues of justice and injustice. So there are readers who are not farmers and stop rising uh, farmers for organization and governance of CPR. They keep on supplying uh, many labor hours for management concerning organization and governance with return, without returns. We can observe agency goals that are a case of the choice of leaders that since uh, indicated. So uh, this shows an uh, uh, introspective choice process uh, depending on same choice. Uh, theory for systemical evaluation of the distinction between will be agency. So I made. So uh, sorry. Uh, I. So conclusion. Uh, ethical viewpoint for social choice. Uh, there I uh, indicated. I wish to indicate uh, the three points. Uh, <coughs> first, uh, custom on to inherit historical tradition, even if there are rapidly devolution and uh, aged uh, pollution, uh, population in Adobase district, uh, people keep on inheriting traditional rules beyond generation in their custom. Love of homeland, when people know penalty, many physical works, some don't uh, return to uh, some pe someone does return to Adobase district after their retirement from job. Meanwhile, even if people know penalty and many hard physical words, someone who wraps home around, uh, they return to Adobase district. So, uh, the uh, group conscientiousness. Elder people say, which people in Adobase district are family? They keep on taking care of each other in daily life. Physical works are one of which families should, should conduct. Even if people are died or injured by accident on physical works, people didn't require a compensation to others. Thank you for cooperation. Thank you very much, Kaio. Thank you for the beautiful pictures as well. Uh, it's open for discussion. Yes, uh, Michael, please. Thank you for the talk. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, you were using the word cooperative. Uh, um, no, uh, can you come back? Um, I was wondering if 
it was a voluntary thing for the community to come together, but because of the custom, it become, it's sort of not really voluntary, and you have to participate to be part of the community. Is that how it is? How much freedom is there? Because it seems, she's saying, it was initially cooperative, voluntary cooperation, but actually if you don't cooperate, you have to pay a fee. Ah, yeah. to so it's yeah. So uh, so the uh, there in the case of Adogasi district, so uh, the um, the exactly uh, so the uh, most of the member. Uh, participate uh, by volunteer works. So, uh, so because uh, meanwhile uh, the uh, um, farmers, uh, especially uh, who manage uh, livestock, uh, can get revenue. After the uh, governance of uh, the uh, grassland, uh, example, so then uh, there are no uh, volunteers uh, who uh, don't stay in uh, Adogase district uh, for governance of the uh, CPR. The member only uh, or uh, in Adobase district, uh, keep on uh, participating. Okay. No? Yep. Thank you. Other comments? Or questions? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I wish to uh, say, uh, lastly, I give this presentation uh, to my father, so uh, who was died by the accident in this cooperative works. So there are lots of uh, members uh, in Adobasi district, it's similarly in Aso area, uh, by the accident in uh, for sustention of uh, the grassland, not only grassland and landscape in Aso area. So, but uh, uh, in this uh, Adobase district, uh, nobody requires compensation. A compensation? Mm. Okay. So, this shows typical case. Uh, that neoclassical economics cannot elucidate. So, so uh, then I I appreciate for Dr. Neda because uh, when I consulted uh, the direction for of my research as a uh, three years ago. So. Uh, about uh, uh, after the uh, writing uh, PhD paper, uh, I uh, focused on the theory only. So he said, uh, I, I need to introduce uh, the uh, typical case. Mm -hmm. After my father died, I know this. Then I uh, began the uh, research. For case study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you, yes, you mentioned there nobody gets compensation for dying, but it's sort of compulsory to participate. Is, is the grassland case in Kumamoto uh, also this type of system seen in other parts of Japan or not? Uh, uh, yeah. Is it also seen in other parts of Japan? This type of cooperation? Ah, ah. Are there other examples? Yeah. 
so in my uh, frankly speaking, for long uh, period, I uh, con uh, I worked uh, the for um, movement, uh, public movement of uh, for solution of the uh, pollution problem in Kumamoto. Uh, so then I noticed uh, some leaders uh, who uh, choose uh, agency goals or uh, this escal viewpoint. So uh, sometimes I uh, observed uh, the cause of uh, hard work, uh, the leaders were died. Yeah. Yeah. But neoclassical economics uh, cannot elucidate. This is very important problem of neoclassical economics and our society. I think. Thank you, Thank you very much. So uh, the next presentation. Um, we uh, have a great privilege to have uh, uh, Dr. Hitomi Irizawa from Yogo College of Medicine. She's going to talk about legal and ethical considerations on family formation using gametophyte assisted as ART. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Julia. I'm Hitomi Irizawa. Today, I'm glad to have an opportunity to have a topic in this session. Uh, I'll talk about legal and ethical consideration on family formation using government assisted ART. Assisted ART gives opportunity to the, uh, for those who could not expect natural reproduction and encourage them to decide how and when they form their family. Now, rather than understanding infertility as a phenomenon, it is recognized as a condition that should be treated or a disease that is curable with treatment due to ART. In Japan, only AID is accepted and the first two child conceived by AID was born at Keio University Hospital in 1949. And more than 50 years later, it is estimated that over 10,000 children have been born by means of AID. Today, the number of couples is increasing who receive treatment that cannot be obtained legally in Japan by traveling to foreign countries. This phenomenon is called as reproductive tourism. It's because um, there is a strong social stigma associated with infertility in Japan. Um, go and method of this research. In this presentation, I will consider legal and ethical problems arising from ART and propose necessary law improvement in the future. Um, in Japan, mother is recognized as delivery principle. So, in 2003, one woman traveled to U.S. to request surrogate baths um, where IVF was performed using her own egg and her husband's sperm and have three children. Then, Japanese Supreme Court judged that three children are not legitimately children because she did not actually deliver them. And, uh, in Japan, father is recognized as a presumption of legitimacy. So, um, father, uh, a child conceived by a wife during marriage shall be presumed to be a child of her husband. Then, once a children born with Third part aspect is written in the family register as parent child, he or she cannot know the existence of a donor without to sterling from a parent. In Japan, there was a case of PAR. In June 2001, 
a woman on the went at the F using a group reserved sperm from her late husband and delivered, delivered a boy. The uh, background of this case is that her late husband suffered from chronic minoidal leukemia and he kept his sperm frozen because he may lost the ability of fertility due to a side effect of radiation therapy. And her late husband has expressed his desire strongly that a woman have his child even after when he passed away. So she delivered and she filed a three lawsuit to have the birth of the of the boy registered as a legitimate children of her and her late husband. And Japanese super a Supreme Court ruled that legal parent children relationship between the deceased husband and the children was not established. Following these two reasons, one is pregnancy is impossible in natural reproduction. Two, even in light of the system of custody, support, inheritance, and inherited suicide, there is no room for basic legal relationship in legal parentage relationship. On the other hand, some sexual minorities have already left their family by gametified assisted ART. A man who changed family register from female to male due to sexual identity disorder and his wife had a ball by sperm provision. And the boy did not be recognized as a legitimate child by local government. Then he appealed to the court. And the spring court recognized a husband as a legitimate father, even if he didn't have the ability to make a woman pregnant. There are some opinions against this judgment. For example, this judgment leads to the confusion that relative laws admit the birth with ART. A family register yet not to express the relationship made by both relative. This is unfair because M2F can't deliver, so they never had legitimate children. However, the Supreme uh, Japanese court judged uh, considering GID special law and a husband is now legitimated as male, so he can have a legitimate child, the Supreme judged. However, Japan today is facing a serious situation of donor shortage. As a result of this, Care Hospital, which has worked on about half of AID in Japan, has stopped accepting new patients since August this year because of the situation of guaranteed donor shortage. The background of donor shortage is due to the spread of the light to know the origin. K Hospital added the article that there was a possibility informing donor information regardless of the will of the donor when there was a request from an AID child to the consent from a donor. Then the number of donors declined because people are afraid that their personal information may be disclosed to children. Surely, the light of children uh, the right to know their origin is very important right. In 1990s, individuals born after AID eager to know their biological origin further, and they seek further. Now, they continue. Surely, information related to the future of the children shall be considered an exception to donor's privacy and should be subjected to disclosure because this, inf this is information related to the light of self-making about their life plan. For example, the presence of heredity disease, whether the partner whom they wish to marry has a broad relation or so on. In order to allow a child to exercise their intentions based 
on correct information regarding life planning, such as whether to marry or make families of their own, we need to guarantee their right to know the origin. However, there are another case about LGBT. Some LGBT couples eager to make their families with donors. While AID children claim that they want to know their donor, in case of LGBT, some children are obliged to know their father's own genes. In Japan, some lesbian couples recruit donors on internet sites and before become pregnant by self-insemination of the sperm that have offered by donors. One case I knew in Nagoya, this is an actual case, it's a lesbian couple got a donor to recognize his child because they want their children to know their father on genes. Um, once a child is recognized, the information about father is written in child's family register. Some information about mother and child also written in the register. Is this situation suitable for the child? The child shall know their father on genes by accident. And the donor may be obliged, obliged to support as a legal father. In America, donors who doesn't support uh, who doesn't support couples through, food, through hospitals have a risk to be obliged to pay support, uh, support costs. Advanced agreement among couple and donor about support obligation has no legal effect in Japan. The donor's parents may interfere with a couple's family life as checking the family register. Then I think the necessity to establish the law about ART. Now there is no law about the government fit assisted ART in Japan and civil court still does not accept ART. However, in order to survive the government assisted ART, such as AID stopped in Hill University, it is necessary to clarify, indicate by law that donors are not parents who have the rights and obligations. In addition to that, guaranteeing the right to know the origin and the circumstances of the domestic donor shortage may cause new escrow problems like this. How we should deal with foreign donors' information? There are a risk for Japanese donors to be easier to be identified and so on. When considering the perspective of establishing children's identity, it is surely necessary to guarantee the disclosure of donor information. However, there are still many extra issues about disclosing. If we guarantee the right to know the origin of the children, then we have to consider how much information on donors should be disclosed while seeking the solution to extra challenges like this. And one, for example, full disclosure maybe leads to the violation of the mass privacy. On the other hand, restricted to genetic information may also lead to the risk of eugenics to donors. Because people with rare genes are more likely to, to be identified, so there is a possibility that people with genes common to many people will be elected as donors. And we sh should consider about this closer experience. We have to ensure children to be aware of what they do not want to know. And I think truth telling way is very important. According to AID, it is said that truth telling will make family relationship better because most of those who was born with AID and claim that that the right to know origins must be admitted tend to have got a shock that parents hide the truth. However, many AID children live happily without knowing. So there is no manual to deliver truth telling. It is also necessary
necessary to make choices that children do not know about certain information by multiplying in stages according to the growth of children. While considering Japanese laws and court cases, we found that due to the absence of a legal framework, there is likely to be increase in contradiction between the use of outdated legal proceedings and te technical development of ART. So, in modern Japan, this legislation on ART urgently need to be prepared. And in that role, the welfare of the children should be afforded the utmost respect because we must sufficiently uh, sufficiently take into consideration the human rights of the next generation. On the other hand, in order to sustain AID, it is necessary to consider both the information that is surely needed for children with ART and the ways which donors can participate in ART without anxiety about their privacy. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Yutomi. Um, on your slides uh, about the concerns about identification, I think uh, actually it's going to be very easy to identify. The price of the complete genome sequence is now under $1,000, yeah, yeah. um, so you can identify anybody if you're interested in doing it. And in Japan, yeah. for Japanese income, you know, it's uh, 11... Yeah. This is an unexpected condition in the 1940s. So, um, the um, so um, the right to know their origin, it, origins discussion is common today. However, um, the past area, um, AID or other ART, is regarded as a method to make happy family. Mm -hmm. However, uh, in this, uh, however, today there are many kids to test their gene or relative, um, blood relative tension. So, um, how we can guarantee the right and privacy? It is very important because if we guarantee the right to know the origin. Um, it means um, it may violate the donor privacy. And if it, um, and in Japan, um, Japanese people tend not to say no or uh, I'm father. Mm. Um, they have difficulty to come out. So one voluntary donor, as a number of the voluntary donor is decreasing. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, in Sweden, I mean, and in Sweden it's been long established that you must disclose uh, or you must share your information and I think other country it's an interesting case. Other comments, questions? Anybody like to make any comments about assisted reproductive technology? Yes, Michael, please. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, there was a documentary I've watched before. It's been a while, so my memory is not very accurate. But um, um, in the US, there was this sperm donor, and um, because of the his um, physical appearance, um, mm -hmm. his sperm were very popular, mm -hmm. and so um, a lot of people were choosing mm -hmm. that specifically, mm -hmm. and then. Um, the the children that um, uh, grew up uh, they became attracted to each other although they were living across mm -hmm. like different parts of the U.S. because their background was similar and they they could communicate online mm -hmm. and after a while some got married and uh, afterwards realized they were related but so the issue um, especially if the pool is very small and it, it if it's within a country, um, even in the U.S., if that can happen, it, it seems like it's a, a common issue. It could become a common issue. So, 
may, maybe it makes sense that there's less donors now, but um, I, it's a very tricky question. Um, I just thought I'll make a comment. Uh, okay. uh, in Japan, in Japan, recognized child is based on blood relation. So if if a donor provide their gametes to couples who want to make family, um, however, there um, there is a certain blood relationship between donor and children. Then, uh, if couples uh, file to the court, he is uh, he is the father or she is the mother. Then court will admit the support uh, support costs, and and uh, they have uh, they have to be obliged to deliver their light of the father or mother legitimated. So Japan and uh, Japanese donor are afraid of. Um, mm. Would somebody else like to make any comments or questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. We'll continue at dinner. Thank you, Tommy. Okay, so uh, we're going to be briskly walking for five minutes from here to the restaurant. Tomorrow, uh, just if those of you who are interested in a special paper uh, by Professor Panos Album, it will be delivered especially for our USN students on Skype at 8.30, but everyone's welcome. And it will be on... Phenomenology of Consciousness. The Phenomenology of Consciousness, Comparisons of Western and Indian Approaches at 8.30. And our regu our, the round table starts at 9.30 in this room. And so if you would like a morning of philosophy, please come. Uh, and uh, we will uh, please take the things you want. We'll walk together with uh, Professor Takahashi and Kimiko. will lead the way and the staff. So please pack your stuff up and uh, go out. Be ready to leave in one minute. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. <laughs>